This is a truly tantalizing image. Why is it tantalizing? This is Proxima Centauri. Since its discovery over 100 years ago, it has captivated astronomers the world over. It lies so despairingly close, yet would take generations to reach. It is not visible to the naked eye, yet it is the closest star to our solar system. It was at one point the lowest luminosity star known to man, yet also the most active one. As if the paradoxes of this star weren't alluring enough, scientists have recently discovered a seemingly Earth-like exoplanet in its orbit, opening conversations about interstellar colonization that include Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, and Stephen Hawking. It's almost like it is knowingly toying with us humans and our unquenchable curiosity for what lies beyond. If you're anything like me, you also can't wait to drink in everything there is to know about this enigmatic star. I'm Alex McColgan, and you're watching Astrum. Join me today and let's indulge in a whistle-stop tour of the Alpha Centauri star system, from the binary stars Alpha Centauri AB, to diving deep into everything we know about Proxima Centauri, its recently discovered planets, a controversial possible discovery, and what kind of flyby missions the future might hold. Leaving Earth, it would take just over four light years to reach the closest known stars to our solar system. I say stars, because they are technically a triple star system. Collectively known as Alpha Centauri, they are made up of Rigel Kintoris, also known as Alpha Centauri A, Ptolemy, also known as Alpha Centauri B, and Proxima Centauri. Together, Rigel Kintoris and Ptolemy make up the binary star system Alpha Centauri AB. They sit 4.37 light years away from Earth and are both sun-like stars orbiting a common center every 79.76 years. If you're south of the 40th parallel, you'd be able to see them at night. Though to the naked eye, they just look like a single star, the third brightest in the sky behind only Sirius and Canopus. The binary Alpha Centauri system was discovered in 1689, but it would take over 200 years for the third star to reveal itself. Luck came in 1915 to a Scottish astronomer named Robert Innes. At the time, Innes was the director of the Union Observatory in Johannesburg, South Africa. While comparing photographic plates with the help of a blink comparator, he observed that a faint star had moved in the five years between photos. This movement was about the same as that of the Alpha Centauri binary star he was observing. He wondered if the new star could be part of the same system. After further investigation, he concluded that it was closer to the Sun than its twin siblings, a finding which was quickly confirmed by his contemporaries. Paradoxically, it became both the closest and dimmest known star at the time. The surprises didn't end there. In 1951, American astronomer Harlow Shapley discovered that Proxima Centauri is a flare star. Not only that, but that it was the most active flare star known back then. Over the last 70 years, Proxima Centauri has become a hotly studied star, no pun intended. And with the recent discoveries of an Earth-like exoplanet orbiting it, I think that interest will only intensify. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get to know this star a little better before placing such grand expectations on it. At 4.24 light years away, Proxima Centauri is slightly closer to us than Alpha Centauri AB. It is a main sequence red dwarf star, with an estimated mass of 12.2% and a diameter 15% that of our Sun. Despite its smaller size, Proxima Centauri is about 40 times more dense than our Sun. Due to its low mass, the interior of the star is totally convective. This creates a magnetic field around the star and leads to the sporadic release of this magnetic energy in the form of flares. As a result, Proxima Centauri randomly experiences drastic changes in brightness and energy emission. On May 6, 2019, a flare event on Proxima Centauri was observed as briefly being the brightest one ever recorded. These flares release radiation across the electromagnetic spectrum, including X-rays. To give you an idea of Proxima Centauri's solar activity, its baseline X-ray luminosity is roughly equivalent to that of our Sun, a much larger and hotter star. This level can increase by up to two orders of magnitude during a flare. Not only does Proxima Centauri have more intense solar activity than our Sun, it also has a higher frequency of it. It is estimated that 88% of the star's surface is active at any given time. This is way higher than our Sun, even at the peak of its solar cycle. Before you start thinking of Proxima Centauri as a fiery ball of fury, remember, 
We are comparing apples and oranges here. Our sun is not a red dwarf. In fact, compared to other red dwarfs, Proxima Centauri is considered to have a low activity level. Unlike the sun which scientists estimate will only burn through 10% of its hydrogen supply before burning out, Proxima Centauri is predicted to use up almost all its fuel before leaving the main sequence in about 4 trillion years. And by then, Earth, our sun, and our whole solar system will all be long gone. Alpha Centauri AB is 0.13 light years, or 2 trillion kilometers, away from Proxima Centauri. You might be wondering, if Proxima Centauri is so far away from its companion stars, why is it considered part of the same stellar system? Well, we have data that shows it is gravitationally bound to the Alpha Centauri AB binary star, making it part of the stellar system with an orbital period of about 550,000 years. How it ended up in this orbital situation is still open to speculation. But the two main scenarios seem to be either, one, Proxima Centauri was bound to the Alpha Centauri system during its formation, meaning the stars likely share the same elemental composition, or two, Proxima Centauri was captured by the binary star's gravity during an encounter, leading to a highly eccentric orbit that was later stabilized by the galactic tide and further stellar encounters. Regardless of how Proxima Centauri got into this triplet, calculations suggest that in 3.5 billion years it will get out. As Alpha Centauri AB continues to evolve and lose mass over its lifetime, Proxima Centauri, the binary star system itself is also predicted to disassociate and diverge in about 12 billion years into two white dwarfs which will forge independent and steadily diverging paths. Being our closest neighbors, we know quite a lot about Alpha Centauri AB, but we'll go into more detail about this binary star system in another video. For now, it's all eyes on Proxima Centauri. The search for exoplanets around Proxima Centauri had been ongoing since the mid-2000s, without much luck. But researchers weren't willing to give up. Not only was this star the closest neighbor we had, it was also a red dwarf, 20-40% to 40 of which have a planet orbiting in a habitable zone. The patients paid off. Observations at the European Southern Observatory in Chile identified anomalies in Proxima Centauri which couldn't be explained by flares or other solar activity. The data seemed to indicate there may be a planet orbiting it. In January 2016, the Pale Red Dot Campaign, a coordinated effort from multidisciplinary scientists and ground-based telescopes around the world, was launched to see if this suspected planet could be identified. In August of the same year, the discovery of exoplanet Proxima Centauri b was announced. It is at least 1.07 times larger than Earth and sits 20 times closer to Proxima Centauri than we do to our Sun. This exoplanet orbits its star in just 11.2 Earth days. Even though Proxima b is within Proxima Centauri's habitable zone, that's not to say it could sustain life. There's lots of other factors that determine habitability than liquid water. For one, the intense solar activity would pelt the planet with 10 to 60 times the amount of UV and X-ray radiation we get here on Earth. We need to develop SPF 3000 to make the journey worth it. Another factor to consider is whether an atmosphere could survive under such conditions. As far as we know, Atmospheres are vital for the maintenance of a water-friendly surface pressure, protection from dangerous space weather, and planetary climate regulation. The radiation Proxima b is exposed to might be enough to strip away the key components of an atmosphere over time. Frustratingly, we don't know much about Proxima b beyond its distance from its star and its orbital period. It is unlikely to have any moons due to the instability of their orbits on larger timescales, but it is thought the planet itself is tidally locked to its star. As discussed in a recent video, this doesn't bode well for potential habitability. It also likely developed under extremely different conditions from Earth. Assuming it formed at the current distance from its star, it would have gone through a much faster evolution with stronger impacts and less water. However, there is some debate about its formation. Some scientists think the amount of material in the protoplanetary disk would be insufficient for it to form at its current distance from the star. It's more likely, they say, that the planet formed farther away from its star and eventually drifted into its current orbit around Proxima Centauri. What the surface of the planet might look like is down to pure speculation. Theories range from a planet covered in ice to planet-wide oceans like Earth, though unlikely if the planet is indeed tidally locked to a water-free world with only dry land, or a subsurface ocean like Europa. In short, 
No idea. We haven't directly imaged the planet yet, so we'll have to wait for the first flyby to get a better idea, which some moguls are already planning. If it happens, I have a feeling it will be just as earth-shattering as the Voyager flybys in the 70s and 80s, but more on that later. Six years after the discovery of Proxima b, the news of Proxima d swept global headlines. The first signs of the planet emerged in 2020, when a weak 5.15-day signal was detected in the radial velocity data during a study on Proxima b's mass. Following further data collection and analysis, scientists announced the discovery of Proxima d in February 2022. So far, we know it is a sub-Earth planet, with at least 25% the mass of Earth, orbiting the star every 5.1 days. Sitting at a distance of 4.3 million kilometers, it orbits too close to have a habitable equilibrium temperature, which would be driven up to 87 degrees Celsius. It's also probably tidally locked, and would be pelted with so much radiation that chances of finding life there are very slim. But, this planet holds promise in another realm. It is the lightest planet to ever be detected with the radial velocity method. Since the planet is too far to be seen with telescopes, scientists rely on a characteristic wobble, anomaly in the movement of a star that indicates the potential presence of a planet. The more massive the planet, the more obvious the wobble. In the case of Proxima d, the wobble was practically imperceptible. To me, the fact we caught the wobble and were then able to demonstrate with enough certainty that it is caused by a planet is a technological milestone worth celebrating. If only the world of astronomy were so cut and dry, where there is breakthrough and celebration on one end, there is bleak uncertainty on the other. That's exactly where you'll find the controversial exoplanet Proxima c. Initially detected in 2019 using the same radial velocity method that found Proxima d, the existence of Proxima c was then confirmed in 2020 using Hubble astrometry data. However, in 2022, another team challenged the initial radial velocity data that led to the alleged discovery. They claimed the anomalies could have instead been associated with small, unaccounted systematic errors in the data extraction method the researchers used. Basically, a miscalibration. The trouble arises from the fact that unlike Proxima d which orbits incredibly close to its star, the data for alleged exoplanet Proxima c places it very far away from its star, with an estimated 1,928-day orbit. There is no similar example of a wobble detection of a planet with such a low amplitude at such a long period. That doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong, but it is going to require some confirmation from additional observations, says Paul Robertson, astronomer at University of California, Irvine. If Proxima c does exist, it will take a bit more data to convince reluctant skeptics. If it does not exist, it remains unclear why the Hubble astrometric data was able to corroborate and confirm a planetary signature. I guess we'll just have to wait and see what future studies find. With the recent discovery of Proxima b and how relatively close Proxima Centauri is to us, it is a perfect candidate for a future flyby. However, reaching our neighboring star system will take thousands of years using conventional propulsion technologies. Newer techniques like solar sails or nuclear propulsion might make such a trip possible within a human lifetime. Such ideas spearheaded the development of Project Breakthrough Starshot, an initiative set up by investor and physicist Yuri Milner, the late Stephen Hawking, and Mark Zuckerberg, which aims to reach the Alpha Centauri system within the first half of the 21st century. The idea is to conduct a flyby mission by sending microprobes weighing just a few grams at 15 to 20 percent the speed of light, and they think they could do it as early as 2036. With this timeline, the probes would reach Alpha Centauri in 20 years, and we on Earth would receive the first data four years later. After the initial flyby, the probes would possibly venture to the exoplanets and collect data on their atmospheric compositions, much like the Voyager missions did on our outer solar system decades ago. The team is pinning their hopes on the yet-to-be-developed Starship, a microelectronic gramscale wafer, carrying cameras, photon thrusters, power supply, navigation and communication equipment, essentially constituting a fully functional space probe. Based on Moore's law, which states that the speed and capability of computers can be expected to double every two years. Bold and ambitious, the plan is not without its challenges. The team proposes to power these microprobes with 100 gigawatts of Earth-based lasers. That's the equivalent of the output of 100 large nuclear power plants, 
concentrated on probes just centimeters wide. Plus, all components of these tiny probes must be built to withstand extreme acceleration, cold, vacuum, and collisions with space dust. With this in mind, perhaps the project would more aptly be named Project Breakthrough Longshot. But if the history of space exploration has taught us anything, it is that missions confronted with cruel hardship and slim odds can emerge as triumphant milestones of humanity. Proxima Centauri might just be the next one for the history books. Let's just hope we're around to see it.